picture with me. I want you to step into the story and imagine that you are the person that I'm telling the story about, okay? So, you've been imprisoned inside bars that are cold, that are hard, and the only sound that you're hearing is the dripping of water from far off in the distance, moaning from prisoners down the hall, and you're stuck. You don't know how you got in there, but all you know is that you're stuck in your own mess, you've, you've done some wrong things, and now the darkness that's around you seems like you can't get out. And so you start to panic, because it's, it's, it's frightening to be in there in the dark with so much unknown. And, and, and you look around, you're looking for things, anything that you can do, anything that you can use in order to help you get out. And then you find a, a marker, oddly, in the corner of the cell, in this cell. And you start using it. You start using it to dig at the corner, and oddly enough, it's not doing much, much good, so uh, you go to the side, and, and then you find, you find a coin. Perfect, perfect, I've seen it in a movie where or if I, if I pick the lock just right, I, I, I get free. So with all of your effort, with all your might, with the resources that you have in that cell, you're working hard to get that lock open. You're working, you're whittling, and you're trying to get it in. That's not working either. And so thing after thing after thing, you're jumping from item, from different effort to different effort in order to get yourself out, and then in one moment, you find yourself back. But this time, you have a spoon, and you're digging deep, and you're kind of making a little dent because you're being uh, pretty vigorous about it. You're making a dent in the floor with this spoon that you found, and all the while, th there's a prison guard standing with the gate wide open going, like, hey, the door's open, hey. And you're like, hey, stop, okay, one second, just give me a second. I'm, I'm working on, on this, I'll be there in a second. That's story exudes the phrase, I choose slavery, which is the very title of our message today. So something that I love that Bailey just brought in to this discussion that we've been having the past couple weeks on freedom in the book of Galatians is, is, is the, the difference between a slave child, right, and knowing that we're not a slave child. We're a child of the promise. And today what I want to discuss with you is, is diving more into that, that decision, right? We have the choice. But, but first, I want to dive into more of the background of Galatians, right? We know that Paul wrote Galatians. That's undisputed. So Paul wrote Galatians, and he had made a trip to Galatians before. He had invested in this church, right? And, and as it was said before in the past weeks, that... Um, the, that Galatians, they didn't have their foundation in Judaism. So they came from a Gentile background. But Paul himself came from a very law-abiding household. Who knows that where you were raised has an impact on how you live now? <laughs> yeah. So if I have a household that is very law-abiding, right? And, and that's all I know and that's all I see. Then when I grow up, that's the way I'm going to live until something else challenges it, right? And Paul has this encounter with the Lord that transformed his life in a moment. It was that powerful that it transformed his life in a moment to now his passion was for the law. Now it's for the gospel of freedom. So he had already instilled seeds in the Galatian church, in the church in Galatia. And now he, he's hearing that they've turned away so quickly. I want to read, right before I go into my passage, I want to go into um, Galatians 1.6. I'm amazed that you are so quickly deserting him who called you by the grace of Christ for a different, for a different gospel. So my passage is in um, Galatians 5, 1 through 8. I want to go through Galatians 5, 1 first. I think it's a perfect depiction, it's a perfect layout of the structure. And I've got some news on me. Structure is not a scary word. I love, <laughs> I love seeing what um, Paul used, how Paul uses the structure to lead us through this part of the, the letter. So, this scripture says, It was for freedom that Christ set us free. 
Therefore, keep standing firm and do not be subject again to a yoke of slavery. I want you to know that in this one scripture, we get an understanding of who we are, the action that we should take because of who we are, and then two options that we have. It was for freedom that Christ set us free. We are set free. We are children of God that are set free. That is our identity. Therefore, this is the action. Stand firm. Stand firm. Stand firm and do not be subject again. If they were once there before, they tasted that before, they should know, right? Do not be subject again to the yoke of slavery. So that's one option. Do not be subject again to the yoke of slavery. Or they can choose to stand firm in knowing that it was for freedom that Christ set them free, that it was the gospel of freedom. They have two choices now, right? Okay, so let's keep going. So let's go into the, the, the gospel of slavery. That's not a real thing, right? It sounds kind of like a, like, I don't, I don't know that phrase, but um, right here it says, Behold, I, Paul, say to you that if you receive circumcision, Christ will be of no benefit to you. So, right here, if we are going by the law, right? If the law is the thing that we are using in order to, to gain our, our righteousness from God, in order to be just with God, then we are forfeiting freedom. We're forfeiting freedom. We're giving it up. We're giving up a gift. So, if I give somebody AirPods as a gift, Ooh. hey Milton, come on up. Come on up, Milton. So if I give Milton, yeah, come on up. If I give Milton AirPods, this is a gift, right? And these are AirPods, these are like a delicacy, these are things that right now are like, oh, AirPods, right? So Milton, if I give you AirPods, this is something that's like, oh, I don't really want to give up, right? Because yeah. it's a gift and it's pretty valuable, right? Yeah. And they're, uh, no. <laughs> they're, <laughs> they told us, they're just AirPods. They're just AirPods, right? And, and, and for some reason, we see the gift of grace, the gift of freedom that the Lord has given us as something so dispensable. We will hold so tightly to the things of this world when the thing of freedom that God has for us is so much greater. So we're so quick to forfeit freedom if we choose this way. But, you know, and another thing, this isn't really new to us because it's not like they just started forfeiting freedom. It's just not, not like they just stopped believing that God's gift was the best in Galatia. This has been happening in Israel, right? So it happened in Israel, happened in Galatia, happening today. So in Numbers it says, All the sons of Israel grumbled against Moses and Aaron, and the whole congregation said to them, Would that, would that we had died in the land of Egypt, or would that we had died in this wilderness? Why is the Lord bringing us into this land to fall by the sword? Our wives and our little ones will, will become plundered. Would it be, not be better for us to return to Egypt. Would it not be better for us to return to Egypt to go back into slavery? So another thing, another option, another awful thing of choosing the gospel of slavery is now they would have to be obligated to fulfill, to, to follow the whole law. Let's read the next verse. Hmm. One moment. And I testify again to every man who receives circumcision that he is, he is under obligation to keep the whole law. So there's a lot of laws. We think that we have a lot of laws, right? They had 613 commandments that they would have had to take. So if they're going to say that they, that they are going to stick to circumcision in order to be one of the laws that makes them just and, and right before God, then they have to follow all of them. And if this gospel isn't already seeming like doom enough, we have one more thing. You have been severed from Christ. You who are seeking to be justified by the law. 
You have fallen from grace. So not only, sorry guys, not only are they forfeiting freedom by choosing this way, not only are they choosing to obey all the law, which is an impossible task in its own, but now they are severed from Christ. Does this sound like a hopeful gospel to you? <laughs> is God a hopeful God? Yes. Is God a hopeful God? Yeah. Yes. So, we have this choice. But, I'm going to give you a little bit of a happier choice. So, we can choose the gospel of freedom. So, I'm going to read Galatians <coughs> 5, 5 through 6. For we, through the Spirit, by faith, are waiting for the hope of righteousness. For in Christ not Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision means anything, but faith working through love. So what do we get in this gospel? We get the spirit. By faith. And what this is, is we get a holy companion that is alongside us, that we no longer have to do anything in our own power, to make ourselves right. Instead, we can rely on someone who is who is a part of who God is in itself, and now we have him within us. And we are also, we are made righteous. There's not a thing I can do. There's not a thing I can say. There's not a thing you can say that you can do. Have you guys tried to do it? Mm -hmm. I've tried to do it. <laughs> Multiple times, times and time, time and time again, and it hasn't proven to work. So you'd think we would get it. You would think that the Israelites would get it. You would think that the Galatians would get it. You would think that we would get it. We say hindsight is 2020. We have countless stories of their hindsight being written down. But it's not enough. So, we also aren't left here with just a, a wandering like, I have the spirit, and I, um, I, I'm, I'm made righteous, but now what? We're also given the gift of a new mission. A new mission that don't, shouldn't weigh on us. A new mission of love. So we are given a new mission. So, I, I feel like time and time again, I, I've, I've had dreams, I've had stories happen where I'm having nightmares about like showing up to class late, or I've been studying for a certain exam day in and day out, and then I, I have a dream the night before, and it just so happens that I miss the mark in the dream, I show up when the professor's leaving the classroom and all the students had just finished and aced it, and I missed it. Or, I mean, I'm in plays, so I, this is a nightmare to me, I don't know who it would be to you, but I, I show up to the play, and it's the last night, and I'm sitting in the audience, like, enjoying the play, and I'm supposed to be the lead on stage, and I'm just sitting there enjoying it, and I'm like, uh, oh. <laughs> Once again, a story of missing the mark. So it's not only in our dreams, it's not only in my dreams when I go to sleep, but it's in our reality where we feel like we're constantly missing the mark. But in this state, in this, in this last mission, that we have the opportunity to love people and to love them into knowing the faith and the freedom of Jesus Christ, that is one where, where we can't miss the mark. We're in constant communion with God, through the Spirit. We're made righteous by what he already did and not what we can do on our own. And we're given a new opportunity. But it isn't easy. Because we they were running well. You were running well. Who hindered you from obeying the truth? This persuasion did not come from him who calls you. That's why there's this, there's this disparity between these two because we've been listening to someone else besides God. Who hindered you from 
obey the truth. This persuasion did not come from him who calls you. Instead, we've been letting voices in our heads. We've been letting circumstances in our heads that have allowed us to stand in the middle of these two and actually wonder which one's better. <laughs> Pretty easy. It seems like it, right? And let me tell you a little part of the story that I missed in the beginning. The prisoner, his dad was the head of all the justice system in the United States, prison, criminal, criminal system. His dad was the head of it. You would think that he would enter in that, or be in that bondage in a little different posture than frantically digging, frantically searching for anything that he can do to get out. Guys, that's just a story. And we're living in the opportunity to know that our Father, our Heavenly Father, is the creator of this entire universe. And the one who has already conquered all the evil that we feel suppressed by, that we feel like we're in bondage to. So, one thing that I feel like we, we might not understand is this, this, this is an, an older letter, right? And it's like, ah, like, the law isn't something that we relate to, but what if, and this is something that maybe you can do later, what if you were to take the same scripture, and every time it says circumcision or the law, you place something that you feel like you're bond, binded by. Something that you feel like you have used to help you be justified in front of the Lord. The whole I Paul say to you that if you fulfill all the things that the church told you to, Christ will be of no benefit to you. And I testify against every man who goes to every service but doesn't really know Jesus, that he's under obligation to do everything right. This is something that we do today. Like I said, it's not new. We're still faced with this. So there are some things that, that we need to do now, right? We have freedom. We have the freedom to leave. We have the freedom to leave the prison gates. That's a freedom that's ours. We can leave the bondage of the world and enter into the freedom of Jesus. And two, we have the freedom to live. We have the freedom to live knowing who we are. Like I just said, we are children of God. And we've been reminded that this whole series, we are children of God. We are heirs of the most high God, and we have a birthright that we don't need to earn. And we are free to love. We are free to love others and free to love God. Doing this will show others the way into their own freedom. So Something I want to do before I leave is I want you to know those three things of your freedom. But I also want you to be reminded of who your God is. That he is the defender of your soul. That he is advocating for you. And I want to read these lyrics to the song Defender. Because hey, hmm. the song Defender gets me every time. But when I was just reading it the other day, I was like, wow. These lyrics are good. So look at it through the lens of this choice that we have. To live by this way or to be subject to slavery as we've been time and time again. You go before I know that you've even gone to win my war. You come back with the head of my enemy. You come back and you call it my victory. You go before I know that you've even gone to win my war. Your love becomes my greatest defense above anything we can do. It leads me from the dry wilderness, and all I did was praise, and all I did was worship, and all I did was bow down, and all I did was stay still. Hallelujah, you have saved me. We didn't save ourselves. So much better your way. Hallelujah, great defender.